Now, how do we find the mean or expected value for a binomial random variable? Simple. If I want to find the mean, the expected number of, of children, if we go back to that example, remember, I'm going to have five kids. Uh, the probability I have a girl is 0.75. So what is the expected number of girls I would have out of five? What is the mean number? What is the center of this distribution? Okay. So very easy to find the mean of a binomial distribution. Or remember, as we keep talking about, mean is expected. If you see the word expected, it's telling you find the mean. So the expected number is just n times p. So how many girls do I expect to have out of five children? Five times 0.75. Five. Okay, it's that simple. So if we don't want to do that work in our head, we can grab our calculator and we can just find the mean five times 0 0.75, except my decimal didn't go in there, 0 0.75. And the mean number of girls is 3.75. That's how many girls we expect to have out of five children, if the probability of having a girl is 0.75. Now, how do I find the standard deviation or how, on average, how many girls away from 3.75 girls would, I, would I, I have? Remember, for the mean and standard deviation, it doesn't have to be a whole number. It doesn't have to make sense. It's okay to have a mean of 3.75 girls, even though we've stressed over and over, we can't have an answer of that because it's binomial. The mean doesn't have to be a whole number, neither does the standard deviation. So if I want to find the standard deviation of a binomial, it's the square root of the mean times the probability of a failure. So it's n, the number of trials, times p, the probability of success, times 1 minus p, which is the probability of a failure. So if I want to know the standard deviation of the number of girls out of five children, I simply take the square root of my five children times the probability of success times the probability of failure. So let's use our calculator to do that once again. So I'm going to set, tell it to do the square root of five times 0.75 times 0.25. Oh, the standard deviation then for my binomial variable would be 0.9682. So I expect to have 3.75 girls out of every five kids I have with a standard deviation of 0.9682. Remember, on average, then, I expect to have somewhere around 0.9682 girls away from 3.75 girls. I know in context, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But again, the mean and the standard deviation, it's okay if they're not values that could be taken by the random variable. All right, so that sums up binomial distribution. One last distribution we need to take into account. I know this chapter is forever long, but we're getting through it. Okay. Now, for, oh, I lied. We got to look at when am I allowed to do this, okay? So we're not quite looking at the last type of uh, random variable yet or special random variable. When taking a random sample of size n from population of size n, we can use a binomial model that counts the number of successes in the sample as long as little n is less than 0.1 times great n. What the hell does that say? What does that even mean? Okay, What they're saying is if something is not perfectly binomial, as long as the sample is large enough, then it will still work. So what they're saying is that even if it's not perfectly binomial, okay, as long as the population is at least 10 times the size of the sample, then the distribution is approximately, whoops, not normal, approximately binomial. 
That's what this box right here is trying to say. We can use binomial distribution even if the probability of success changes slightly as long as this is true. Um, what is this box over here saying? This one's a little easier to understand than the one on the left. Suppose that a count X of successes has a binomial distribution with N trials and a probability of success of P. Well, duh, we know that. We've been talking about that over and over again. N is the number of trials and P is the probability of success. Okay. Um, we can turn binomial into normal. Okay. We used to call this a rule of thumb. Binomial can turn into normal. So what this box is saying is we can take a binomial distribution and convert it to a normal distribution. Normal distribution, yeah, well, we use Z-scores, our favorite picture, table A, normal CDF, whatever we prefer. We can take something that's binomial and convert it into normal if N times P and N times 1 minus P are both greater than or equal to 10. So binomial can be converted to normal if and only if N times P and N times 1 minus P are both greater than or equal to 10 meaning that the expected number of successes and the expected number of failures are both 10 or greater, then binomial can be converted to normal. Honestly, I'm not sure why this is such a big deal because we could just do binomial, but it's on the AP test, so we better know it.